All right, students, let's go ahead and now revise the chapter of value of supply. Everyone over here now, value of supply. Let's take a quick linking and then we'll go ahead. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate supply or supply can be intrastate supply. Interstate supply, what will happen? I GST will be levied. Intrastate supply, CGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he go ahead and collect and pay? He will have to go ahead and calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Right, everyone? Now, value of supply you have to determine as per section number 15. Everyone over here, GST is calculated as value of supply into rate of tax. Is the value ascertainable? Yes, sir. If the value is ascertainable, always remember value of supply will always be the transaction value. Sir, what do you mean by transaction value? Transaction value means the price paid or payable when the parties are unrelated. Can you tell me when are the parties related? Scope plus family plus sole agent. Yes, everyone. Scope plus family plus so, legend, I hope you guys remember, shares greater than or equal to 25% in both of them. Control, officer or directors of each other's business, partner, E for employer, employee plus family plus sole agent are always related person. Always remember, transaction value will be taken. When, what is the transaction value? Transaction value means the price paid or payable when the parties are unrelated and the price is the sole consideration then they went ahead and told section number 15 2 what are the things which are to be included in the value value of supply may the things to be included i went ahead and told you always remember t o p i i c s is to be included t for any taxes says fees other than gst t c s not to be included o for obligation of the supplier made by the recipient if supplier had to pay someone and i paid on his behalf that will be included in the value of supply p for packing charges special packing this packing that packing everything has to be included i for incidental charges which are charged by the supplier for anything done with respect to the supply has to be included baba anything done with respect to the supply at the time of or before the delivery of goods or supply of service has to be included then we have i for ipl interest penalty and late fee also has to be included c for commission always remember Selling commission has to be included. Selling commission means seller ka agent ko whatever commission is paid by the buyer that is to be included. S is subsidy. Always remember one thing. Subsidy given by the government never include but subsidy given by other than government. Always remember if it is linked to price, directly linked to price only then to be included otherwise do not include right everyone things to be included are topics taxes obligation of the supplier made by recipient packing charges incidental charges interest penalty late fee commission and subsidies right everyone next over here is section number 15.3 which goes ahead and says discount is to be excluded if it is given at the time or before then always go ahead and exclude it whether the name is cash discount or trade discount whatever name it has to be excluded but discount if it is given after the supply that is year end or periodic discount then always remember early condition has to be satisfied only then it will be excluded what is the early condition everyone there has to be a prior agreement for the prior agreement for such discount agreement has to be there number two it has to be linked to the disc Discount has to be linked to the invoice and I for ITC has to be reversed by the recipient on the basis of credit note. Early condition means agreement linking to invoice and credit has ITC has to be reversed by the recipient. Only then discount will be excluded. Otherwise, if discount is given after and early condition is not satisfied, discount shall not be excluded. One point I always told you, interest, penalty and late fee, whenever you receive, always assume it to be inclusive of GST divided by 100 plus the rate multiplied 
100 plus the rate which is applicable on your principal supply multiplied by 100 only then that amount will be added to your value interest penalty late fee always assume it to be inclusive of gst right and please write your assumption correctly and come in the exam the next one over here is if value is not uh, if you can't go ahead and determine the value under section number 15 basically if transaction value is not acceptable might be the parties are related or price is not the sole consideration 15.4 goes ahead and says valuation cannot be done under subsection 1 then apply valuation rule which is 27 to 31 27 goes ahead and says that money is not the whole consideration then please go ahead and take open market value of your supply which supply you are going ahead and doing open market value of such supply has to be open market value of such supply has to be taken that will become the value of supply sir if that is not there then you can go ahead and take money plus fair market value of the additional consideration sir if that is not there then what i have gone ahead and supplied similar like kind and quality ka value will be taken as the value of supply if that is also not there then whatever you have given the money plus the additional consideration ka mark value will be found out by applying what Rule 30, which talks about 110% of your cost of acquisition, 110% of your cost of production, or 110% of your cost of supplying the service. If this is also not possible, government told, please apply your brain, residual method, best judgment. They are going ahead and telling, apply reasonable means, apply section number 15, apply earlier rules, and find out the value. There is one proviso in rule number 31, which goes ahead and says, in case of supply of service, rule number 31 can be applied before rule number 30 then we have valuation rule number 28 which goes ahead and says whenever the supply is between distinct person or related person the value the value will always be taken as the open market value if open market value is available that will become the value of supply if that is not there then directly come to like kind and quality if that is not there apply rule number 30 and then apply rule number 31 sir rule number 28 made two provisos are there two provisos are there which goes ahead and says if you went ahead and supply to someone and then he is going to supply he is your related person or distinct person he is going to supply the thing as such then when you have gone ahead and supplied to him that value will be 90 percent of the price charge by that guy Baba, your recipient when he supplied like kind and quality whatever charges he has taken from the customer of that 90 percent will be taken as your value of supply are we clear everyone so, if goods are supplied further by the recipient as such, the way you gave it, he supplied it, then value at the option of the supplier can be 90% of the price charged by him to his customer who are not related person of like kind and quality item, whatever amount was charged of that 90% can be taken. Sir, if I have gone ahead and supplied to my recipient and he is eligible for full ITC, for an example, I went ahead and supplied to my branch office and branch office has separate registration, then we both are distinct person and I can go ahead and show whatever amount I want to show in the invoice and that will become the open market value that will be deemed as the open market value and that will become the value of supply. Always remember his recipient is eligible for full ITC value declared in the invoice is deemed as the open market value. Then we have uh, rule number 29 value of supply of goods made or received through agent in case of agent always remember open market value or 90 percent of the price charge for like kind and quality by the recipient to his customer who are not related person whatever agent has charged for like kind and quality of that 90 percent will become value of supply between you and your agent or open market value whichever is higher if that is not possible apply rule number 30 and then apply rule number 31 then we have section number 15 5 which goes ahead and says for for some notified supplies we will go ahead and say what will be the valuation method and government have gone ahead and told rule number 31 which is for lottery betting and gambling and horses what will be the value of supply for lottery government went ahead and told 100 multiplied by 100 divided by 128 multiplied by the face value of the ticket or the price notified in the official gadget whichever is higher will be taken as the value of supply but if it is betting gambling horses then 100 percent of the face value of the bet or 100 percent the amount which you pay in the total visitor machine will be taken as the value of supply of the betting car supply or lottery or horse race right everyone now 
Then we have rule number 32. Rule number 32 goes ahead and says, rule number 32, one goes ahead and says, these are optional valuation method with respect to certain supply. Then we have rule number 32, sub rule 2, which goes ahead and talks about purchase or sale of foreign currency so if there is a money changer who is going ahead and buying and selling foreign currency what will be the value of supply there is option number one which is first method where they have gone ahead and told is the currency involved INR yes sir our currency involved INR is there is the RBI reference rate available yes sir it is there then whatever is your selling rate minus RBI reference rate or RBI reference rate minus your buying rate multiplied by the currency exchange will become your value of supply. If RBI reference rate is not available, whatever INR you receive or INR you paid, that will become your value of supply. Sir, if the currency involved is not INR, for an example, I received dollar and I went ahead and gave pounds, then government went ahead and told how much dollars you gave, how much pounds you gave, convert it into INR, take the lower one, multiplied by 1% will give you the value of supply. So, currency 1, currency 2, multiplied by RBI reference rate, whatever is the lower amount, multiplied by 1% will go ahead and give you the value of supply. Then, government went ahead and told, if a money changer wants, he can go ahead and opt for the second option also, which goes ahead and says, sir, if the currency exchange is up to 1 lakh rupees, the value of supply can be deemed 250 rupees or 1% of the value, 1% of the 1 lakh rupees, whatever the amount which is there, whatever is the currency exchange, basically whatever is the INR amount, 250 or 1% of that INR amount, whichever is higher, if it is up to 1 lakh, it is greater than 1 lakh, up to 10 lakh, first 1000 rupees up to 1 lakh will come, then 0.5%, then sir, greater than 10 lakh, then 5500, which is 1000 plus 4500 plus 0.1%. But always remember the value of supply under the second method cannot exceed 60,000 rupees. Then we have rule number 32 sub rule 3 which goes ahead and talks about a air travel agent. An air travel agent can go ahead and pay, can go ahead and show his value of supply as how much sir value of supply can be in case of domestic booking he can show 5% of the basic fare. International booking he can go ahead and show 10% of the basic fare. What do you mean by basic fare? Basic fare means the amount on which the airline company goes ahead and pays you commission done everyone then we have rule number 32 sub rule 4 which goes ahead and talks about a company who is engaged basically if a person is engaged in life insurance business he can opt for this option which goes ahead and says sir if he is going ahead and selling only risk of policy entire premium will become the value of supply but if it's a saving policy where life plus investment both are covered whatever is the gross premium minus the amount which is invested will become your value of supply for an example i charge 10000 out of 10000 premium 4000 is being invested then the value of my insurance policy life insurance cover which i have given it will be only 6000 that will be my value of supply then we have single annuity policy 10% of the premium will become your value of supply if any other case it is there then always go ahead and take 25% of the premium in the first year as your value of supply 12.5% as value of supply in case of subsequent premium or renewal premiums right everyone yes sir we got it then they have gone ahead and told if there's a person who is engaged in buying and selling of second hand goods might be after minor repair he is going ahead and selling them you have to go ahead and remember is the itc taken if the itc is taken then the value of supply will be transaction value but if the itc is not taken then margin basically your selling price minus your purchase price will be your value of supply if the margin is negative then it is to be ignored for an example bank went ahead and sold or if any person is going ahead and repossessing the goods and selling it selling price will be there but what will be the purchase price the purchase price of the original buyer has to be taken minus five percent per quarter or part thereof the amount which will come that will become the purchase price of the bank is it clear everyone? So, if a person is going ahead and selling second hand goods which is repossessed, selling price will be there, whatever you sell it, minus the purchase price. Purchase price will be what? The purchase price of the original buyer minus 5% per quarter or part thereof will be taken as the purchase price. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes sir. Then we have, see, repossessed goods, the purchase price will be purchase price of the defaulting borrower who is basically the unregistered person minus 5% per quarter or part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of disposal that is till the date of selling the by the bank. 
We have rule number 32 sub rule 6 which goes ahead and talks about value of token, voucher, coupon or a stamp. You have to remember in case of token, voucher, coupon or stamp, the value of supply is the amount of goods or services basically, the value of goods and services which you are able to redeem by using that voucher. So, if I went ahead and gave you a voucher, what is the value of supply? The value of supply will be the amount of goods or services you are able to redeem against that voucher. Then we have over here rule number 32 sub rule 7 which goes ahead and says if there is a supply of service which is happening between distinct person, if it is notified then the value of supply will be nil if the ITC is available. Are we clear till here everyone? Yes sir. Then the next one over here is rule number 33. Government goes ahead and says Ramesh if your heart is pure and you have gone ahead and collected anything as a pure agent then the amount which you have collected as pure agent will not be included in your value of supply. You don't have to go ahead and charge any GST. Sir rule number 33 talks about deduction of expenditure incurred by pure agent. If there is an expenditure or cost incurred by a supplier as pure agent, it will always be excluded from the value of supply. Then we have condition over here is supplier should act as a pure agent, payment should be separately indicated in the invoice, supplies procured from the third party are in addition to the services supplied on his own account. For an example, I am a person, I went ahead and told you, I will do your company guy in corporation. You went ahead and I went ahead and told, I will charge you 25,000 rupees, but all the out of pocket expenses might be the ROC fees, you will only have to bear. You went ahead and told me, sir, I am authorizing you, you make the payment of the ROC fees, later I will go ahead and give it to you. That amount which I collect from you will not be included in my value of supply because that was not my job to go ahead and make the payment of the ROC fees. It was your job, but I went ahead and collected the actuals and I made the the payment or my made the payment later I collected the actuals from you. Done everyone. Let's go ahead. The next one over here is circular with respect to PSF and UDF. PSF passenger service fees and user development fees which are levied by whom? Airport authorities. Everyone over here. I went ahead and told you about PSF and UDF. What did I go ahead and tell you about PSF and UDF? I went ahead and told you, first of all, there is airline operators who are there and there is airport operators who are there. Airport operators are people who are going ahead and managing the airport. So, if there is this person who is going ahead and flying through a aeroplane, what will happen is, they will go to the airport and airport, they will go ahead and take various services. Now, for the services, these airport operators will go ahead and charge you passenger service fees and user development fees, but that will be charged through the airline company. So, airline company, when they are selling you the ticket, they will go ahead and charge you for the ticket, plus they will go ahead and charge you GST, plus they will charge you user development fees or passenger service fees, and they will go ahead and charge you the GST amount on the passenger service fees or user development fees. Now, when you go ahead and make a payment of the amount to the airline operator, they will go ahead and give, an, give the amount to the airport operator. Now, these airline operators who are there, they are just acting as pure agent and that will not be included in their value of supply. Their value of supply is only the supply of the ticket which they have gone ahead and done. Now, what will happen? The airport operators who has gone ahead and received this PSF in UDF will be required to pay GST to the government. Now, this airline operator will also go ahead and raise an invoice to the airport operator saying that, sir, we are acting as pure agent, so we want some commission. When they go ahead and give an invoice, they will go ahead and charge a GST to the airport operator, which airport operator will be able to take the ITC. Also, I went ahead and told you this customer, if he wants to take the input tax credit on the basis of the airline cut ticket, where they have gone ahead and mentioned the amount of GST on the ticket and they have also mentioned the amount on the PSF and UDF. This person who has gone ahead and bought the ticket will be able to take the ITC. I have gone ahead and told the same thing over here. Passenger service fees and user development fees are levied by airport authorities. They are levied by airport of authorities but they are levied by the airport of authorities through the airline operator. So, they are through the airline acting as Pure agent. PSF and UDF are consideration for the services provided by airport authority and leviable to GST. Whatever amount is collected, they have to pay GST on that amount. Airline is acting as a pure agent, should separately indicate PSF and UDF and applicable GST in the invoice. When airline is going ahead and giving the invoice to the customer, in the invoice they should go ahead and show the PSF and whatever is the GST applicable on the PSF and UDF. And the customer will be able to take the input tax credit on the basis of the invoice. It is told over here that based on the invoice, the passenger or recipient may be 
able to avail the ITC of the GST paid on the PSF and UDF. Are we clear till here everyone? The next one over here is rule number 34 which goes ahead and talks about rate of exchange for determination of value. Sir, if it is taxable goods or taxable service and you want the rate of tax, in case of goods, you have to go ahead and take the rate notified by the CBIC under the Custom Act on the date of time of supply of such goods. In case of service, you will go ahead and take GAAP rate, generally accepted accounting principle ka rate and sir, it will be on the date of time of supply of such service. Sir, rule number 35 goes ahead and says, if the value is inclusive, how to go ahead and make it exclusive? You will go ahead and take the value divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100. That will give you the value. If the total amount divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100 will give you the value and if multiplied by rate then it will give you the rate are we clear till here everyone the next one over here is staggered discount what do you mean by staggered discount everyone staggered discount mean buy more give get more discount sir if you buy 10,000 10 percent discount buy 20,000 get 20 percent discount buy 30,000 get 30 percent discount if this is the policy I am going ahead and running for an example I am big bazaar I go ahead and offer to people buy 10,000 get 10 percent buy 20,000 get 20 percent buy 30,000 get 30 percent then that discount I will show in the invoice and hence it is always to be reduced from the value it is always to be excluded from the value the next one over here is period eek periodic discount or year end discount always remember periodic or year end discount if the condition under section number 15.3b which is ali condition agreement was there link to discount is linked to invoice and i itc has been reversed by the recipient if ali condition is satisfied discount has to be excluded otherwise discount will not be excluded from the value second discount sir secondary discount which is given it is always given it is never known at the time of supplying it is not known at the time of supplying and hence secondary discount is given which is given later because it is not known at the time of supplying it will never be excluded from the value the next is business facilitator and business correspondent always remember one thing if bank is providing some service through the business correspondent or through the business facilitator and collecting an amount from you in that scenario always remember bank is the service provider whatever amount bank is collecting from you because of the services provided through the business correspondent or through the business facilitator the bank will be collecting an amount on that amount GST has to be collected by the bank and paid to the government. Is the point clear? In case of business facilitator and business correspondent model, never the business correspondent or business facilitator is the service provider. Service provider is always the bank and whatever amount the bank is collecting from you, on that bank will always go ahead and collect GST. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes sir, point is clear. The next one over here is GST on delayed payment on Delayed payment in case of late fees of late fees of EMI, late payment of EMI. I went ahead and told you over here that supposingly, supposingly you went to an uncle and you told uncle, uncle, I want one mobile phone. Uncle went ahead and told, okay, you told sir, I will go ahead and pay on EMI and you went ahead and paid uncle 10,000 rupees plus 1,000 every month for the next four months. Can you tell me what will be the value of supply over here? The value of supply of the mobile phone will be 44,000 rupees. Why sir 44,000 rupees? Why 44,000 rupees over here? Because here the supplier went ahead and gave you the EMI. When the supplier gives you the EMI, always remember, always remember the value of supply will be what? The value of supply will always be included, including the interest penalty and late fee. So, if you supposingly one uncle went ahead and sold you the mobile phone, he went ahead and charged you 10,000 plus 1,000, 10,000 plus 1,000 interest, 10,000 plus 1,000 interest, 10,000 plus 1,000 interest, might be he went ahead and charged you 500 rupees penal interest also. Then, always remember his value of supply will be 44,500, which is basically including this interest. And on the interest and penal interest, GST will come. Are we clear till here everyone? But supposingly, uncle did not go ahead and give you the EMI. He went ahead and told, I will not give you the EMI. But you went ahead and took finance from somewhere. You took a loan from somewhere. Now when you are giving this loan company go the amount back, in that scenario, the interest which is there will be exempted from GST. Uncle went ahead and gave you the mobile phone. You gave uncle 40,000. The value of supply will be only 40,000. This company gave you a loan and you went ahead and paid what? Interest. That interest will be exempted from.
GST. Always remember one thing, government went ahead and told, if supplier gives the EMI, additional or penal interest will form part of the value under section number 15 to D and on that interest also GST will come. However, if third party finance company gives the loan, that is the EMI, in that scenario, interest or penal interest will be exempted under entry number 27 of your exemption chapter. Now, we have valuation of works contract service, where basically construction of building intended for sale part or whole consideration is received before completion certificate or first occupancy whichever is earlier so if supposedly completion certificate is here first occupancy is here whichever is earlier so before any amount is received and i went ahead and basically sold a flat i will have to go ahead and charge gst on the one third one third amount will be taken as the land ka value and two third pay only i will go ahead and charge gst so for an example i went ahead and sold a flat which includes land also and building also then i will go ahead and charge what three crore if i went ahead and charge then government went ahead and told one third of the total con total consideration will be deemed as the value of land so one crore deemed as the value of land then value of construction service that is value of building on which GST will be charged, it will be only 2 crore rupees. That is, always remember one thing, whenever one flat is being sold, before completion certificate or first occupancy, whichever is earlier, it's a works contract service, which is a supply of service, GST will always come on two-third value. For an example, one builder sold me a flat for 3 crore rupees, he will go ahead and charge me GST only on 2 crore, which is two-third, which is the value of the building one third is assumed as the value of the land and land pay there is no gst i hope you guys are clear till here we went ahead and learned section number 15 1 transaction value 15 2 topics to be included 15 3 discount given before or at the time exclude given after ali condition met exclude otherwise don't exclude section number 15 4 valuation rule 27 28 29 30 and 31 section number 15 5 government went ahead and told for some supplies we'll go ahead and notify the valuation method government went ahead and notified rule number 31 a for lottery betting and gambling lottery always remember it is inclusive of 28 percent of the face value or price notified in the official gadget whichever is higher sir in case of betting gambling horses it is always whatever amount you put in the bed that is the value of the supply right everyone rule number 32 went ahead and learned optional valuation method rule number 33 it is rule number 33 we went ahead and learned pure agent whatever amount i am charging you as pure agent will be excluded from the value rule number 34 we went ahead and learned cbic rate in case of goods and gap rate in case of services rule number 35 we went ahead and learned sir if the amount is inclusive how to make it exclusive amount divided by 100 plus rate multiplied by 100 will give you the value right everyone then we went ahead and learned some circulars about discount business facilitator then we learned about emi transaction and value of works contract service here we are done with your chapter of value of supply congratulations people Just a second people, I have a small circular which I have to go ahead and tell over here. It is regenerating to Del Credre agent. Del Credre agent ka circular which is there is also very important. Sir, what happens in case of Del Credre agent? Everyone over here, there will be a principal, there will be an agent and there will be a customer. This person is known as a Del Credre agent. A Del Credre agent is a person who goes ahead and says, I will bear the loss of by date he says the principal sir sir if the customer doesn't pay you i will go ahead and pay the amount to you but for those transactions or basically if i i have to be the del credit agent i will take extra commission are we clear everyone now let's understand in case of del credit agent what will be the value of supply everyone interest related one clarification has come let's let's go ahead and understand for an example principal went ahead and issued an invoice directly to the customer customer was not going ahead and making the payment to the principal so the del credit agent went ahead and told okay sir i will go ahead and make the payment to you okay so the del credit agent made the payment to the principal in this scenario in this scenario the del credit agent will tell the customer hey because of you i made the payment to the principal it is like i have gone ahead and given you a loan and you have to now give me interest in this scenario always remember one thing there was no earlier transaction between agent and the customer he has just given the loan and he is re receiving 
interest in this scenario the interest which is there will not be forming part of the principal ka supply the main supply ka part it will not be forming and this interest may whatever this loan pay whatever interest is being received that will be exempt from gst are we clear everyone but now sir supposingly principal went ahead and sent the goods to the agent agent went ahead and supplied to the customer in the name of the invoice was given in the name of the agent now this person was not going ahead and making the payment so i made the payment agent made the payment to the principal agent will go ahead and tell the customer hey because of you i had to make the payment so it is like i have gone ahead and given you a loan so now you have to pay me this invoice ka amount also plus you have to go ahead and pay me interest also in this scenario if you go ahead and see there was originally a supply between the prince agent and the customer and then the loan was given for which in basically loan was not given actually the payment was done to the principal that is like a loan which is given to you correct everyone so when you are receiving the amount from him which is the invoice wala amount plus this interest ka amount sir this interest will go ahead and form a part of the value of supply the value of supply over here will be whatever is the invoice amount plus the interest because here interest has to be included as per section number 15 2d i hope everyone is clear always remember one thing if the principal had gone ahead and given the invoice directly to the customer in that scenario if the agent tell credit agent make the payment to the principal in this scenario the loan transaction is an independent transaction between agent and the customer where where the interest will not form part of the value of supply of the basically the supply but sir in the second case where you go ahead and see where agent is giving the invoice in his name and sir this and then the agent went ahead and made the payment of amount to the principal agent will tell you that i have given you a loan to you and you have now to you now have to give me a interest in this scenario already one principal supply was there and interest will just form part of the principal supply and it will be taxable at the rate of that original supply are we clear everyone section number 15 2d says you have to go ahead and include it in the value here we are done with your complete revision for the chapter of value of supply congratulations people done